Hello everyone and welcome to your second Android Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we will get a first project set up and running. In doing so we're going to create an emulator. Uh, basically you're going to have a fake phone on your computer that's going to run the applications that we create during our tutorials. So I'll show you guys this first. Down here I have my Conke running that shows my memory. So you'll see the Android Studio and my desktop right now is running 1.24 gigabytes of RAM. Android is heavy on memory usage. If you have less than 4 gigs of memory that you're using, then it's probably going to be very tough for you to make and do good Android programs. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to hit start a new Android Studio project. As it loads, it's going to ask the application name. So as true to most programming, we're going to start out with a hello world. So you notice the application's name is hello world. Then we have company domain, rodney.example.com, and a package name that's com.example.rodney.hello world. So the package name, the name name of the package name is hello world, and then the rest of the package is part of your company domain. So if you were www.thesite.com, then it would be com the site www. your application name. This is a unique identifier so that it can be identified on the Play Store. Um, down here you're going to put your project location so you can put it wherever you put your projects. You just hit next. Here is what I was talking about in the last tutorial with the APIs. So if you go to Nugget, which is the most recent, the one being developed, <clears throat> it shows less than 1% of devices, because really it's only on developer devices right now, or anyone who's downloaded the system image and put it on their phone. If you go down to Marshmallow, you're now at 4.7%. And Marshmallow is pretty much for anyone who's gotten a phone this year, probably has Marshmallow on it. Uh, Lollipop 5.0, about 40% of phones. KitKat, 73% uh, of phones. And Jelly Bean 4.1 is on 95.2%. So this is the minimum SDK. So this shows that lower level, lower API levels target more devices, but have fewer features available. So this is how you're going to be able to write apps that run on most devices versus 4% of devices. So we're not doing anything with Wear TV, Android Auto, or Glass, so we're going to skip those and just hit Next. And then it takes you to add an activity to mobile. So what an activity is, is it's basically a screen. So if you're loading up an application and you have a splash screen, the splash screen is its own activity. It's got the image in the background, it loads for a little bit and then it kicks you over to another activity. The next activity could be, say, a login screen. So it's got a login screen that has a user ID and a submit button. And when you submit it, it'll take you to the actual main application page, which would be uh, its own separate activity. And then if that page takes you to any other places, each place that it takes you would be its own activity. So we're just going to select an empty activity and hit next. We're just going to leave it at the default's main activity. If you're making a splash activity and you're making several activities in one project, then you could name it splash activity, main activity, uh, login activity, whatever. But we're going to leave it as main activity right now. We're going to hit finish. And it will take Android a little while to load this initializing module. If you see Gradle, Gradle Project, Gradle, Gradle is basically the tool that kind of puts everything together. It takes everything and makes everything work. It makes everything work on the emulator. It's kind of the behind the scenes tool that is doing all the work. So, I don't remember if I said this last time, but 
sometimes it takes a very long time for your program to come up and running. If you have a stronger CPU, stronger, more RAM, it'll probably be faster. I have just a regular, pretty much run-of-the-mill CPU and 8 gigs of memory on this computer, so it does take a little bit longer. So you'll notice down here in the status bar, indexing, and you got this progress bar that keeps going. So you're going to want to wait until all of this finishes working before you do anything with the IDE. Okay, and it looks like everything's done. So I'll point over here again at my memory. When Before I started Android Studio, I was sitting about one gig of memory, or one gig of memory usage. And that was with just my desktop and my screen recorder going. Now that we have Android, that's another 1.25 gigs, basically. So it adds up. It adds up to your memory usage. So <clears throat> when you load a new project, the first thing it opens is your Java file. You have a Java file. You have an XML file. So in the Java file, this is basically where the guts of your program will end up being. This is where all the logic, where all the behind the scenes stuff will be. Over here in activity main.xml, this is your XML file, which is basically your layout. Now I'm gonna just kind of position this a little bit better so that we can see it since I'm still showing the memory. This right here is the design version of the XML. So you have two different versions. You have design and you have text. Both of them show a little basically a template of what it should look like when it's actually running. So as of today, I think between yesterday and today of when I'm recording this, Android Studio, Android Studio dropped the 2.2 version out. They released it, so now I have a 2.2 version versus a 2.1 version. So there are some differences, some are major and some are minor. For example, there's not usually two pages right here on this. This is a new 2.2 version. This component tree used to be up here and this is the properties. So as I go, it might get a little lost every now and then because they have changed some of the fundamentals of what has always been here on Android Studio. So just bear with me if I trail off on something like that. Now, here is in design view, here is our application. Here's our activity. So if we click on hello world, it's a text view. So what a text view is, is basically, it's basically text that's displayed on the screen. So if you double click this, it'll automatically select the text right here and you can change it to whatever you want. Well, we'll just say, hi world press enter and it changes high world here um, if we flip over to the text text version you see down here where it says high world if we go down here and we change it to hello world so that it's back to normal you'll see that it changed here if you jump back over to your design you'll see that it changed here so if you change something in design it'll change it on text if you change something on text it will change it on the design version so what this is is properties so we have this text view selected so these are the main properties that most people end up messing with when they're programming for Android so basically an ID for it uh, with height the actual text in it um, font family typeface you know changing the look at a uh, text color text style you can bold it we can bold it, um, text alignment, we can center the text, which doesn't really do anything right now because of how it's set up on the activity. And then if you click view all properties, then this gives you every property that you can manipulate with that. And as you see, that's a lot of properties. I believe that's why they set it up that way so that you see just the ones you need and you don't have to go through that entire huge list just to find 
the exact one item that you're looking for. All right, in the project hierarchy right here, you start with app, manifests. So inside manifests, there's one manifest, the Android manifest. This is a very important file, but we're not gonna go into any details on that in this tutorial. You got your Java. So under your Java, you see there's three folders. There's Android test, test, and then just a normal one. So we'll just, anytime we need the Java file, we'll just click on that one, double click it, and it'll open right here. Uh, under the Java file, we got the resources. So the resources is where all of our resources for the application are. So we got drawables. So if you had any actual graphics, they would go in there. Layout is where your XML folders are, where your XML files are. That's where your activity main file actually is. Uh, mip maps and then values. So under values, you have colors, dimensions, strings, and styles. So if we go under the strings.xml, if you see this is declaring a string variable with a value of hello world. So once we start using this, you will see and you'll understand a little bit better as we go.